dry. <laughs> so the Bitterroot ecosystem, and I don't have a map here for you, but you've probably seen it several times. It's it's a really thin slice of uh, western Montana into the Idaho Panhandle and then south into um, the Salmon area. So it covers, well, it has portions of Bitterroot National Forest, the Lolo, the Nez Perce Clearwater, um, and the Salmon Chalice. And so we currently are an unoccupied um, ecosystem. We have um, transient bears that appear from time to time, but we still have not met the criteria for an occupied ecosystem. So let's see, I need to do the next slide. So just, I uh, wanted to make sure I captured this up front, just kind of a little highlight that um, our, our committee a couple of years ago, we, we met and started talking about this, and then it finally happened this spring that um, we recognized some folks who made some some real innovation and a lot of hard work in developing some, you know, uh, bear-resistant trash um, containers and services. And so it was Allied Waste and Public Services, and it was in the recognition of their efforts in these containers and, and how to deal with trash disposal education and awareness. And they were very honored, and we had some really beautiful um, plaques that were made that, um, that Chris Servine and Jamie Jonko from Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks put together, and they were um, bronze grizzly bear prints. And so we um, told the awardees, you need to make sure when you put these on the wall that you anchor them very well, because they can be lethal. They're, they're kind of big and heavy, but they're beautiful, so that was awesome. And then the rest of what I'm going to talk about is just our progress towards our goals and our five-year action plan. And one of the highlights of that for sure has been our, our grants for bearware education materials, presentations for funding of bear rangers. So before we move into the next slide, just um, you know, because we're, we're in a, an area that's not occupied, we are looking towards uh, maybe some natural recovery of uh, grizzly bears. We do get those transient individuals. Um, there's some thinking that, uh, that may recover naturally over the years. And so our goal has been to kind of prepare the communities and um, folks there to be aware of how to live um, with grizzly bears and you know how to kind of have that interface. And so we, we are really hitting that hard and, and starting into that. Um, Another part of our five-year action plan has been about the linkages, you know, we were